Hey everybody, we're back again with our literature section. We're still looking at Michael Ende's Momo, and we're also looking at some of his other works, like, for example, The Never Ending Story. Mm. For those of you who have watched the Netflix show Stranger Things, you might remember season three has a really cool finale, and that finale is when Dustin and his girlfriend uh, get into a duet singing the never ending story uh, song. And yeah, you'll find out why that happens and why it needs to happen in the future if you watch Stranger Things. If you have seen it, then you know what I'm talking about. Very interesting. So that was the popular song from the 80s movie of the same name, The Never Ending Story, written originally as a book by this German writer, Michael Ende, who also wrote Momo, which is the story that we spent two days just before uh, reading through. So yeah, it's actually a really good movie. I would recommend it for anyone out there with, you know, kids, maybe slightly older kids, seven, eight years old, up to Mm. 12, 13, 14, would probably really enjoy the never ending story as a movie. I'm sure you can find it somewhere. Um, And I didn't know it was actually written by Michael Ende. So we're going to learn more about him, some of his other works and we're really lucky that we have a German speaker in Leah here with us. <laughs> You're giving me too much some, credit No, well, just some of the titles. I think it's nice to hear the titles in the original German. And we're going to find out a little bit more about those stories, as well as talk about Momo, which is our featured, uh, featured story for this week, or sorry, for this month. So let's get into the article and find out more about the very interesting life of author Michael Ende. Let's listen to the whole article one time now. Michael Ende was an important figure in German literature. He was known for his imaginative children's literature and fantasy novels, particularly his classic work, The Never-Ending Story. His debut novel, Jim Button and Luke the Engine Driver, earned him the German Youth Literature Award. In 1973, he won the award once again with the book Momo. The core idea in Momo is an exploration of the essence of time. The men in gray in the book represent the contemporary focus on efficiency and productivity. They steal time from people and cause them to feel anxious and disconnected from their authentic selves. Ironically, in the pursuit of saving time, people find themselves losing significant parts of life. Childhood's innocence and simplicity are crucial themes in Inde's works. They are vividly portrayed in Momo through the protagonist's life. Momo, who appears to have nothing, willingly devotes her time to listening to others, thereby gaining abundant love and friendship. This stands in clear contrast to the adults around her, who are always in a hurry and filled with anxiety. For Momo and her young friends, The happiness of playtime and the value of companionship are priceless. These treasures cannot be saved or stolen by the men in gray. Ende further captures life's beauty with the symbolism of the hour lilies. As hour lilies bloom and wither, they mirror how swiftly life's moments pass us by and the importance of living fully in every moment. Through Momo's journey, Ende emphasizes that time is more valuable than money. This is reflected in one of the lines of the novel, Time is life itself, and life resides in the human heart. All right, so again, we're going to talk about Michael Ende today, but we're still going to wrap up, wrap up a little bit more about Momo's journey. Mm. Um, but we do see in our first sentence here, Michael Ende was an important figure in German literature. Now. Disclosure, I do not speak German that well. You do. I have a Swiss husband, so I speak a lot of Swiss German, also not well. But I will still try to give you guys what I know of a couple of things as we come in here. He was known for his imaginative children's literature and fantasy novels, particularly his classic work, The NeverEnding Story. So he's known for, people know him because he wrote these imaginative uh, uh children's literature and fantasy novels. Children's literature tends to be for a younger group, so it's not necessarily teen literature or young adult literature. It sounds like we're working for a younger group. And when we say that his work is imaginative, it means it's full of imagination, full of creativity. Uh, An imaginative piece of work oftentimes has a lot of fantasy in it, which works out well with the fantasy novels. 
And that is particularly the case with his classic work, The Neverending Story, which is in German, I believe, Die Unendliche Geschichte, which is where you have a boy who finds a magic book and he has to stop the nothing uh, from getting what it wants to get done uh, and protect the world of Fantasia and keep it safe. And you've probably seen him riding on his on the back of that creature on the uh, if you've ever seen the movie screen the movie uh, cover mm-hmm. uh, or poster. Uh, but yeah, it looks like it's a really really good story for a certain age. And his debut novel, Jim Button and Luke the Engine Driver, in German, it's not Jim Button, it's Jim Knopf, which Knopf does mean button. Mm. Jim Knopf and Lucas the locom- uh, Locomotive Führer. Sorry for my German there. Um, that story. Uh, it has Emma, who is the locomotive, Luke, who is the driver, and then you have the accomplice, uh, accomplice, accomplice in Jim Knopf or Jim Button, and they do this big adventure in the world of Morrowland. And that one earned him the German Youth Literature Award. Very, very interesting. And he wasn't done there. No. In 1973, he won the award once again. They should just give it to him mm. with the book Momo. And, of course, that was the book that we read about yesterday and the day before. So he won this big German youth literature award, basically the best, you know, the best children's book writer in Germany for that year. Uh, three times, apparently. So that's very, wow. very impressive. Um, clearly, his books are much loved, and yes, Momo is another one uh, that they uh, that we uh, read about uh, just the other day. As we said, the core idea in Momo is an exploration of the essence of time. All right, so that's the main idea in Momo. It's exploring, and exploration is exploration is basically exploring. So you know, we can talk about the great explorations of the past when people got on boats. And travel to sort of unknown, mysterious parts of the world to discover things and map the areas. The age of exploration is kind of, you know, kind of begins with Christopher Columbus and goes through uh, European countries, quote unquote, discovering North South America, islands in the Pacific, that kind of idea. But we can also talk about a sort of intellectual or academic exploration when you're doing research, when you're discovering new things, when you're reading old historical documents or something like that. Uh, You can talk about exploration. And of course, in another futuristic way, we're using more and more machines to to, uh, go out and do the exploration of space, right? Mm. Spacemen, astronauts, and also satellites and space probes. We're discovering things, going places, learning new things, and making discoveries all the time. So this is an exploration of the essence of time, what time means, how time is valuable, how we should uh, use our time and not sort of take it for granted. Uh, You remember all of those themes from the story. The Men in Grey in the book, and actually that was one also of the original titles of the book. Um, It translates to Momo or the strange story of the time thieves and the child who (laughs) brought the stolen time back to the people. You like long titles. This is for this stories. is the first. This is the first name. <laughs> this is the English name, and uh, we'll get Leah to read the German name. <laughs> Momo oder die seltsame Geschichte von den Zeitdieben und von dem Kind, das Menschen die gestohlene Zeit zurückbrachte. <laughs> so that explains why we've shortened it down to Momo. Imagine German kids going, Mom, Mom, can you read me Momo and the blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so be able to say Momo, but actually the title is also known as the Grey Gentleman or the Men in Grey. So that's another title you might actually find this story under. But of course, the Men in Grey, we know in the book, it says they represent the contemporary focus on efficiency and productivity. Even back in 1973, mm. uh, Michael Enda knew that everyone living by the clock and being so focused on efficiency, getting as much done during your day, being productive or productivity. Yes, these are all very good to, you know, sort of increase the bottom line or make the company do better or something like that. But they steal time, as the article says, they steal time from people and cause them to feel anxious and disconnected. From their authentic selves. Yeah. (laughs) All work, no play makes Jack a dull boy. In other words, to use a very common old English expression, taking time away from people, causing them to feel anxious and nervous, right? If you're late, if you're going to, you know, be behind on on, on your work, get behind the clock, that kind of thing. It can make people stressed out. And it disconnects us from our authentic selves. 
This is also gets into the whole、uh, early bird night owl thing, right? right? I mean, if you're the kind of person who likes to stay up at night and feels great energy at night, having to get up at seven o'clock in the morning to be at your job at nine o'clock. That's not your authentic self. That's not who you truly are. Something authentic is real. It's genuine. It's not fake or pretend or put on or anything like that. So to live the life you want to live, to be the person you want to be, might require ignoring normal schedules and timetables and just doing whatever fits you and fits your body and your life better. Right. And the interesting thing with authentic selves is that. Even though it's talking about something very authentic and very real,、uh, there's a tongue-in-cheek use of it these days by a lot of folks on like Instagram or influencers,、hmm. where they're like, "I'm just trying to be my authentic self." And you've probably heard that if you've watched a few reels here and there, where people are talking about being authentic to myself. And a lot of times it makes you laugh because it's not. Really, what this person is doing? What they're really trying、mm. to do is to get a lot of views, get a lot of people to start watching them and following them. So it's not really about being authentic; it's about、mm, getting people to love them. Well, maybe that is their authentic self. They just <laughs> that need, a, they need attention self, constantly. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Being your authentic self can be just an excuse for being a jerk. Yeah, right. To other people, so don't be that authentic. Don't be that authentic. <laughs> so, so you come across as selfish and self-centered. And ironically, in the pursuit of saving time, people find themselves losing significant parts of life. So this is kind of our look at the story, and we're like going curiously, or、uh, you know, in a in an interesting or, or odd way. Ironically, when we try to pursue,、um, you know, the, the saving time, we actually lose things. We've, we again, we forget to stop and smell the roses. Let's take a moment now and. Smell some roses while our Chinese teacher explains things to us. 听众朋友，大家好，我是安娜。我们昨天跟前天带大家看了默默默默这个故事。那我们先看一下啊、哦，今天呢，主要是要针对这个作者来介绍一下。然后我们通常会针对一个文学作品啊，做一些它的主题的分析。那我们前两天有说过，这是德国的一个小说。德国文学界的重要的人物，第一段的第一句 ，Michael Andy。这个 Michael Andy 他为什么很重要呢？因为他基本上呢是一个文学、儿童文学跟奇幻小说的作家，而且他非常富有想象力。所以，当我们谈儿童文学或者是 fantasy 奇幻小说的时候，在德国，这个 Michael Andy 就是一个重量级的人物。那他有哪一些经典作品呢？出现在第一段的第二句的地方，比如说说不完的故事，然后还有这个呃吉姆波谈火车头大旅行啦，甚至是在《默默》这本书一九七三年的时候又再度的得奖。所以 ，Michael Andy 这个作品呢，除了说是一个很有名的作品之外，其实在第二段开始，我们进到了书的 themes， 也就是小说的主题的时候啊，你会发现这真的蛮值得一读的。例如，在第二段的第一句当中，第一句最后面 ，the essence of time， 这个 essence 就是所谓的本质 nature， 到底时间是什么东西？时间省下来，时间可以省吗？或者是我们拥有的时间到底应该怎么用呢？时间本质的这个探索，是这部小说、这个文学作品呢主要的第一个 theme，t h e m e theme 的那个主题。那接下来看到第二句咯，第二句啊，书中不是有一个灰衣人吗？这个灰衣人其实就代表了我们现代对于效率啊，或者是生产力的一种重视。因为我们花很多时间在工作，花很多时间产出什么什么东西，那就是其实就是灰衣人把我们的时间给剥夺掉了。所以在第二段的第二句这个地方，我们看到的 efficiency 效率。也会是这个文学作品的关键，还有后面的 productivity， 它是所谓的生产力。那这个字可以大家看一下，因为 produce 是它的动词，就是生产。那这个 produce 它也可以念成 produce。如果念成 produce 的时候，它又是集合名词咯，它指的是农产品，集合名词。produce 这个字如果变成名词。
可以说 production p r o d u c t i o n， 那指的又是生产这件事，而生产力则叫做 productivity， 就是在我们今天文章第二段第二句最后一个字。好。那这个灰衣人，也就是效率啊、生产力啊这些东西啊，就窃取我们大家的时间嘛。我们就觉得说，哦，我们每天都在工作，我到底这个人活着到底要干什么、啊？我们就会觉得好像迷失自我了，然后有时候会觉得很焦虑，因为呢，休闲不够啊，休息不够，好像心情也不好。第二段的第三句，最后面的 authentic selves， authentic 这个字指的是真实的。当然，你也可以说 real， 但是这个 authentic 呢，也平常也很常用。就像我们在英文教学当中，教科书是针对学习者有经过这个删减啊，或者是编排啊，重新写过的东西，就不是所谓 authentic material， 不是真实的材料。可是，如果你把这个电视打开，或者是你看到新闻，或者是网络的。这个新闻用英文写的，它都是 authentic material， 就是真实的材料。所以在第二段呢，最后一句就告诉我们，其实我们都失去了生活当中很重要的部分。All right, we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be right back. 好的。Uh, playing in the dirt,、um, hanging out with friends, you know, being silly, laughing, riding your bicycle,、um, not having to deal with the serious aspects of life like how to earn money, where to get food, where to stay safe and have a shelter.、Um, those are things that would take away childhood's innocence. Innocence just being exactly that. The the opposite of innocence would be, I guess, reality. A lot of times, right? Because the reality of life, as opposed to the innocence of life, reality of life is that you have to work to be able to make money and survive and and ideally thrive in your day to day living. Simplicity being something that's simple. So simplifying things, making it more simple. And、those are his goals when he is really trying to write his works. Those are his crucial themes. A lot of times when we talk about themes, we talk about like overarching ideas that show up in a book. So there might be a theme、uh, of a hero defeating a bad guy. There might be a theme of of honor. There might be a theme of trust. There might be a theme of deceit. All of these things are possible themes that will show up in a story. And if you're analyzing a book or a story, you'll go through and you'll circle or underline that area, and you'll write truth question mark or honor question mark to say does this does this fit into、uh, the theme of truth and honor, and can I then use it when I write a paper about this story? Interesting, interesting. So it's kind of the big ideas behind the art, the piece of art. That might not be explained exactly through the story, but you know that that's kind of what the writer is trying to get at. These big ideas and these themes. It says they are vividly portrayed in Momo through the protagonist's life. Yeah, themes often in a story are kind of translated, communicated through the character's life, the main character. In which, in this case, the main character, yeah, could be the protagonist. It's generally the hero of the story, but it's not always a good guy, right? It could be、mm-hmm. a bad person, like a Dracula is one of the is the main protagonist of that story, and certainly he's no hero.、Nope. But it's the main character, the character who causes the action or has action、uh, done to them, or something like that. So Momo, who appears to have nothing, remember living in an abandoned theater, having a tattered clothing and not much,、uh, not many material possessions. So Momo, who appears to have nothing, willingly devotes her time to listening to others. So she doesn't have much herself, but what she does have is her time, and she willingly gives that to other people by listening to them very carefully 
helping them solve problems, and thereby gaining abundant love and friendship.、Mm. So although she doesn't have a fancy home and nice clothes, she has more than enough love and friendship in her life, and that's all she needs. There's, you know, kind of a bit of the theme coming through there. It's not all about time and being efficient. It's about enjoying your life and being surrounded by good people, having abundant love and friendship. Abundant means more than you need, enough and more than you need. If you have abundant time to get somewhere, you have extra time. You can take the slow route. You can stop a little bit on the way or something like that. You're not short of something, lacking something, or in need of something. You have more than enough. It's kind of like the word ample, right? If you have、mm. ample stuff. You have more than enough. We have ample supplies for our party. Even if some extra people show up, we won't run out of drinks or snacks or something. We have abundant party supplies. This stands in clear contrast to the adults around her, right? So Momo doesn't have much in the world, but she has a lot of love and friendship in her life. And this stands in clear contrast. This is very different, very clearly, obviously different. From the adults around her, other people in her community, they are always in a hurry and filled with anxiety.、Mm. They're stressed out, man. They gotta go, go, go. Can't stop. Can't wait. Gotta get things done, and no time to just slow down and enjoy life. They're filled with stress, tension, nervousness. In other words, anxiety. All of those feelings we have when we sort of have this unnamed danger or problem out there, and it's causing worry, causing you to. Sleep badly and have an upset stomach. That's stress, man.、Mm, and it seems like Ende is really trying to say these adults have it all wrong, whereas、mm. the kids have got it all right. This makes me、uh, think of the the movie Monsters Inc., the cartoon movie. If you've ever seen it,、um, they have this whole part about the monsters going into kids' rooms and scaring them to get energy that's then used in Monster World.、Um, and at some point. They discover that laughter gives so much more energy than than、uh, the, the screams, right? Oh yeah. So it's kind of like that. It's like the the happiness factor. What kids know and what kids really are that innocence and that and that happiness is what we really need to focus on in life more than stealing screams or creating anxiety and running for saving every moment of time you can. So for Momo and her young friends, the happiness of playtime and the value of companionship are priceless. Spending time with friends—that's the value of companionship. Enjoying, enjoying that time with friends.、Um, these treasures cannot be saved or stolen by the men in gray. So the men in gray—they cannot access, you know, these happy、uh, things that the kids are enjoying in their life, their childhood. And day further captures life's beauty with the symbolism of the lily of the hour lilies. So symbolism is when you are using a symbol to connect to a, a an intangible and untouchable idea. A lot of time here, hour lilies are standing for this this、uh, saved time, this magical saved time. As hour lilies bloom and wither, they mirror how swiftly life's moments pass us by and the importance of living fully in every moment. So bloom here is when we're talking about flowers, and they bloom. It's when they come into their most beautiful moment, right? They go from being a bud where they're closed up, and then they open up, and then they're just absolutely gorgeous for a while. And then that's when they are in full bloom. A lot of times we will say, and then they wither.、Um, blooming can also be describing a person. A lot of times we might say. This young lady is in full bloom. She's absolutely gorgeous. She's reached a level of maturity as a young woman, and everybody thinks she's just adorable and beautiful, and she's really in a good stage in her life. And your life can also be in full bloom when you are doing well. You are being successful. You feel like every you're very healthy. You know everything feels like it's in its place, and life is in full bloom.、Uh, hopefully, doesn't wither for a long time. Um, yeah, it mirrors how swiftly life's moments pass us by. Life can go by just so quickly, and the importance of living fully in every moment. So enjoying every moment like a kid does its childhood. Absolutely, very, very good advice from Momo. Of course, from Michael Ende through Momo. It says through Momo's journey, Ende emphasizes that time 
is more valuable than money. Ooh, they say time is money. So does that mean that they're wrong?、Mm. I don't know about that.、Mm. Um, okay, so yeah, that's definitely a good lesson. It is a world that we live in these days, and it's actually kind of impressive and. Maybe also a little sad that Michael Ende realized this back in what 1973、mm. when he wrote these、uh, these words.、Um, but of course, I think the world has gotten even more、uh, efficient mind, you know, efficiency minded, and sort of watching the clock is kind of a normal thing for people to do. But he wants people, especially kids, to know. The time is more valuable than money. It's true. I've heard people say that you know when they're talking to people on their deathbed, they're not like, "Oh, I wish I worked harder. <laughs> I wish I'd had more money in the bank." It's no, I wish I'd spent more time. Dot 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 with my friends, doing the things I love, pursuing my hobbies, things like that. So this is reflected in one of the lines in the novel: "Time is life itself, and life resides in the human heart." Wow, that's mm, deep. deep. If I'm going to get a new tattoo, that's what's it. That's what it's going to say. <laughs> Make sure resides is spelled correctly. Exactly. I might get it done in the German though. Resides. <laughs> I don't know what the German would、no. be. If it was German, it would probably take up my whole back. <laughs>、yeah. So many, so many words. So time is life itself. Life is time. And, you know, because if you're not alive, you don't have time. And if you don't have time, it means you're probably dead. Dead. And life resides. Life lives in the human heart. Right. That's where our memories are created. That's That's where our love is. That's where our life experiences really are. Michael Ende said it in 1973 through Momo. It reminds me. I didn't read this book as a child, but I did watch the,、uh, I believe, 1986 or 87 classic Ferris Bueller's Day Off. <laughs> and at the end of that movie, he said, "If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it." No, he says, "Life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it." Or, in other words, stop and smell the roses. So let's take a moment to stop and smell the roses as our Chinese teacher explains things to us one more time. So we 刚刚提到啊，在第二段当中，这个《默默》这个小说啊，它核心思想就是对时间本质的一个探索。那当然这是第一个 thing。第二个 thing 呢，则出现在第三段的地方。其实在，在呃安迪的作品当中啊，他通常都会探讨一些童年的纯真呐、啊，童年的简单呐、啊，单纯这种事情。所以。这一整篇呢、啊，就是我们在这个单元当中的第三天。文艺的描述啊，没有太复杂的句型，可是有蛮多的关键字词是大家可以抓出来的。像在第三段第一句当中 ，childhood's innocence， 这个 innocence 就是一个很无辜、很天真、纯真的状态。当然，在法庭当中的 innocence 变成是无罪的意思。除了孩童的 innocence 之外，那种很简单、很单纯。全然的倾听，这样这样子的一个 simplicity， 就所谓的简单，是另外一个呃 Michael Andy 的 thing 的主要的主题。所以，现在接下来的这个第三段呢，像第二句当中，或者是第三句当中，默默啊，很乐意花时间去倾听别人，所以就会得到很多的爱啊，跟友谊。可是呢，这个在小说当中提到的成年人，就是非常的匆忙。然后又是非常的焦虑的，这就形成了一个对比。所以在小说当中，呃，人物的刻画很鲜明，而且产生对比的时候啊，读者读起来也会很有感受。在第三段第四句当中，我们把这个对比 （contrast） 这个字抓出来。我们说黑跟白是对比，高跟矮是对比，大跟小是对比。在小说当中，孩童的 innocence、simplicity 是一个对比，而大人常常都觉得很忙，然后很焦虑。最后一个字，第三段第四句最后一个字的 anxiety 这个字也要学起来哈、哦。这个字也是平常很常用，但是大家有时候会不小心忘记它怎么读 anxiety。那对于默默啊小朋友来说，就是一定要玩嘛，然后朋友很重要啊。但是这些宝贵的东西是不能够被灰衣人给偷走的。所以这些呃，我们在第三段呢、啊，第五句这边看到的 happiness of playtime， 玩耍时光的这种幸福快乐 ，the value of companionship， 还有大家陪伴、互相作伴的这种 value， 这种价值是 priceless， 标不出价格。东西如果标不出价格，就表示它太珍贵了，非常珍贵，无价的 priceless 是非常珍贵。好。
。当然，最后一段特别有提到 Andy， 他在小说当中啊，他是用 lilies。Our lilies 作为一个 symbol， 作为一个象征，来象征生命的美。所以，当时间百合花盛开又凋零的时候，这种花开花谢又反映出生活的瞬间，在我们的这个一辈子当中啊，是过得非常快的。时间是会很快的溜走的。也就是说呢，我们必须要充分的活在每一刻。最后面这一段，我想应该是把最后这一句话。把它画起来是很重要的。Time is life itself, and life resides in the human heart. 后面的 reside in 其实就是 live in, lie in, l i e lie in， 存在于什么什么地点。所以在这边呢，也跟大家互相的勉励，我们要珍惜时光，活在当下，因为时间其实就是生命的本身。那么生命呢？生活就在我们的心里。以上就是我们今天的内容。我是安娜，我们下次见。Well, that has been a few days of deep thoughts and interesting stories. I've really quite enjoyed learning about Momo and her mysterious、uh, existence. I think that it's one story that I would like to either read or see if there is a movie version、mm. out there. There is a movie version, but I looked it up. They've—I don't think they've ever done an English version. Ooh, so you're going to have to pull out the subtitles. Yeah, come on, Disney, get on it. <laughs> For English Digest, I'm Leah, and I'm Mike. Bye, bye, bye.